Do I dare say the R word? Recession? Is this what's going to happen? Hey, we are talking about a recession in today's video with my good friend Dion Begg. Interest rates, job loss, and more. Let's jump into the studio. Yes, my friends, Mr. Dion Begg is on camera with us. How you doing, my man? Fantastic, Gary. Got some exciting news to share with your viewers and listeners today. It may look like it. I love it. What, what, what's going on there? I love I love the new logos, the new brand. Tell us all about it. Yeah, so for, look, for about uh, 20 years now, I've been in the world of finance and real estate, and I've been operating under my name, which uh, obviously my name is Dion, and my, my mortgage company was called Mortgages by Dion. But for, for many, many years, um, I've had a big team of people behind me helping helping with processing the mortgages and looking after our clients. Uh, they've helped me win these awards behind me, the top 75 broker for five years in a row. And I just knew that it was time for our brand to evolve, to be more than just mortgages by Dion, because there's a lot more behind us. And so we decided to figure out what, what would be a fun way to kind of link who I am to the brand, but still take my name off it. And I thought, well, we'll link it by sort of my Australian roots. So we, we asked our um, we asked our clients in an email, mass email survey a while ago, uh, when you think of Australia, what animal do you think of? And everybody said kangaroo. So we said, let's let's go with that. So uh, our new brand is Kanga Mortgage. And uh, yeah, we've got a, a new website and uh, other ways to engage with us. But if we've got a second, I'd, I'd love to share that with everybody. Yeah, for sure. Let's do that in just a second. I love, and my friends, have a look at that logo. Good hard look because I love that you integrated the 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 true proud Canadian flag into that logo. I love it. That's right. Yeah. So we've got uh, the Canadian maple leaf smack bang in the middle of that kangaroo. Um, and yeah, so this is our new website. Uh, basically, it shares some of the awards. Here's, here's our team. Uh, I think f for anybody who's interested in dealing with anybody in the world of services, it's really important to look at real testimonials. And I guess one of the things I'm really proud of, we've got nearly 400 five-star Google reviews. We're probably gonna cross that 400 mark very soon. But also we've got a bunch of clients who've been kind enough to leave their, their story with us um, by video. And so a lot of people say, you know, by watching those videos, they can see people who kind of they relate to. So that's something that, um, you know, if you're interested to learn more there, and then also here, Gary, some of the stuff that you and I have done together over the years, uh, webinars and podcasts, this is kind of like a, a learning and resource center where if you're a first time home buyer, watch this, you learn pretty much everything you need to know. Um, this this one here, I think you remember from a couple of years ago, Gary. Um, that is going office. back a long time. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, various podcasts that I've been on over the years. So uh, use it as a resource and you can engage with us there. And also uh, we've got this, chat thing there where you can just chat with me directly on uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, but yeah, thanks for letting me do my plug. No, that, that's excellent. I love it. Check it out. Uh, what's the website name again? Kangamortgages.ca. Correct. It's kangamortgage.ca. There you have it, my friends. So go check that out. And and uh, do, you, do you have a newsletter that people can also sign up for or just stay in yeah, touch with? Yeah, that's or? right. So there, there should be a newsletter to subscribe to uh, if there isn't. I'll, I'll get on that. Um, but yes, definitely the best way to engage with us is there. And every week I'll send out, I usually send out videos, uh, blog posts uh, about what is going on in the market, uh, similar to the content that you and I uh, discuss here, Gary, but sometimes in a bit more long form. Yeah, no, that's excellent. Congrats on the new brand and the new launch. It's, it's always fun to launch something new and uh, and branded and, and have people, you know, get tuned into it and, and recognize it. It's, it's a lot of fun. Yes. It's a lot of fun. Good stuff. And a lot of work. <laughs> we oh, both man. know yeah. that. So many decisions, thousands of decisions that had to be made, but we finally got through it all. Yeah. If you're an entrepreneur, you, you feel it, but it's all good. You, you know, you know, the, the fun and excitement and the frustration all at the same time, my fellow entrepreneurs, but it's all That's good. It. It's all good. So, Let's let's talk about what's going on in the market. And there's a lot of things and a lot of news feeds and a lot of Twitter feeds, positive, negative, or extremely negative. And and there's always, you know, there's always some glimmer of hope. And 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 quite frankly, you and I would discuss and, and say, sometimes it's hard to see that glimmer of hope, right? We you, it, mm. and we said it off camera in a sense, it's gonna get worse before it gets better. Uh 
Talk to us from like the economic perspective of what's happened over the last week or so with some of the numbers coming out from um, from from Canada in a sense. Sure. So, you know, I mean, Gary, you and I have been speaking for months about, you know, the intention of these in- interest rate increases. The intention was to cause, a, 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 I guess, a decrease in economic activity, which which of course then means job losses, right? And so the writing is clearly on the wall now for several months in a row, we've had tens of thousands of jobs lost every month. And the last at the last count, we're at 114,000 jobs lost since May of this year. And so effectively, the, the goal of these interest rate increases is actually now really coming to a head and actually showing its head. Uh, and, you know, it doesn't seem to be uh, any sort of changes in, in the near future. Um, I guess that the headlines that we might have seen in the news recently, TELUS let go of 6,000 people. Uh, when I see that headline, I think, wow, you know, for 6,000 people to be gone, it's not just individual households choosing to disconnect their cable bill. That's not happening. Mm-hmm. It's businesses deciding to potentially close down divisions that don't need telecommunication services anymore, right? So those two things are in, in, intertwined in that way. Um, and then the, the other big one that's kind of ironic is, you know, the construction industry has lost 28,000 jobs over these last few months. And it kind of flies in the face of all the other things you and I've been talking about, Gary, regarding need for housing. And, you know, the fact that the immigration minister is now the housing minister at the same week that we're we're learning about 28,000 jobs lost in the construction industry. Um, And in in fact, I think you and I spoke about this off screen about um, why that's happening. Why are developers choosing to not, not build more or let people go. Yeah, and and I'd say there's a few, a few idea or a few reasons why, in a sense. And of course, that's the the cost of things. Inflation is, is going to have a factor on that. And as that lumber ink price increases, well, so does the home price. As the um, land development costs increase, so does the home price. And and of course, that has a factor on who's the end user. And maybe more importantly, uh, the cost of money. Developers have to get loans and mortgages too. And and we all know as the cost of money rises, uh, the gap on their profit uh, obviously shrinks. But, you know, people will say, well, maybe all these home builders don't need to make so much. Well, Last time I checked, this is a co- this is a country where the entrepreneur and that business uh, excels, and everyone does need to make some money, and and the cost of it just doesn't make sense for developers right now. So they are we are seeing projects pulled back on. At the same time, you have the government trying to tell us, as we just talked about, we need more housing because of 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 immigration and to bring down the home prices because we have we have to build more. And I saw a stat the other day. I wish I had the screen shot in front of me, but it was along the lines of um, how many homes are required for our existing population, right. let alone our immigration coming. And it's still not, it's not enough. We are currently not building enough to sustain our, even our own population, let alone immigration. Correct. And I mean, 28,000 job losses cannot help. Um, in, in speaking with, uh, you know, other people, other other people connected with the development industry, uh, they're saying to me, you know, Dion, we've got some properties, especially in downtown Toronto, that aren't moving as fast as they expected, and therefore they can't really believe in their next project if their current project isn't selling as quickly as they had hoped in the past. Um, it's interesting though that it seems to be the inner core which isn't selling as fast, but the outer, the 905 area of the GTA seems to be still selling, still growing for these uh, new construction guys. But, um, but yeah, the inner core, which, you know, we've seen towers, uh, crane towers over our city for so many years now. Uh, apparently, we have more towers in the city of Toronto, crane towers in the city of Toronto than in many other cities combined. Um, but yeah, that, that may be slowing down in the near future. And, and the interesting thing, too, that we probably should discuss uh, at some point, or at, at some level here, I should say, is, you know, th- the economists that are hired by these builders and and yeah they have their own internal team but they'll hire uh companies third-party companies to go and do their property performers for them just like an investor would in a sense they want to do a performer for the triplex that they're buying in a sense right it's it's the same format just scaled much bigger obviously and they are having a tough time scaling out what that 
four bedroom detached home sells for in 24 to 36 months. Uh, an incredible mm-hmm. hard time just based on where uh, financing is going to be, the current lending environment and so forth. So uh, they're having to make some decisions and not have all the information in front of them in front. Yeah. In front of them because of, of course our economy is, you know, stepping backwards in a sense. Right. And that's just the reality of it. Yeah, right? I, we're, we're, you know? I'll be frank. I wouldn't want that job, man. That, that, no. that sounds like a, a hell of a job to try. It's like the, the target is moving so fast day by day. I mean, there was a period of time, Gary, in my business where for months on end, when a client called me and asked me, what's the rate for this product or this lender? I, I knew it straight away because it hadn't changed for a couple of days or maybe a couple of weeks. Yeah. Things are changing so fast at the moment, Gary. Um, where and, and this is the funny, the, the funny part here is that, or the, it's not so funny, but the reality is as much as this economic data is negative, job losses, you know, a mass, mass job losses. The other one we, we, we should talk about is Canadian Tire, which I think every Canadian has spent some money in Canadian Tire, right? Um, Canadian Tire is reporting yet another quarter of losses. Uh, sorry, not losses, reduction in revenue reduction. by uh, by over 3% again. So when when a massive national retailer like that is is saying, you know, we're not, we're not making as much as we used to, jobs are being lost, you would think, Gary, that interest rates would then be on the on the downward slide but in fact this week interest rates have yet again bumped up and it's in the face of all this economic data it's like they're kind of ignoring that and they're, they're moving for reasons outside of that which may be particular to institutions or investors um, that that are looking at the future uh, very differently to what's what's happening in the market but i think i think one of the big things around that is the announcement e- even though the bank of canada um, is, is been sort of flat with interest rates or, or very small interest rate increases. They made it very clear to the economy that we should expect higher rates for longer. And because of that, these bond yields are still are still high. And as such, uh, fixed rates are still high. So uh, yeah, I, I would like to see the uh, silver lining here, Gary, for you know what's to come next month. But uh, I think the reality is everybody talks about this big R recession word, um, and uh, you know the 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 the, uh, the definition of that is two consecutive months of negative growth. Or, and, and even though we aren't seeing negative growth, it's very much decreased. And job losses to this extent, I mean, if we're not technically in a recession, it sure does feel like one right now. Yeah, and I think that's the mindset of many people, right? Like as just as you explained, there's something as simple as going to Canadian Tire and 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 in not spending as much, perhaps, right? Uh, walking by all those sale items in the middle of the aisle and not looking at them, you know, it's it's, it's little things like that. Guilty, you know? guilty, man! They got me every time I go in yeah. there. I go I in to too. spend fifty and I walk out with one hundred and fifty. Yeah. That's yeah. right. That's right. I do need. A candle that's four feet tall to stick in my garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's really all it is, a big citronella candle. Anyways, um, no, but it, it's true, right? It, I think it, the mi- that mindset is sitting in, and if it already hasn't, uh, it will most likely sit in pretty pretty soon. And uh, I always, I'm always intrigued. Are there are there industries or segments of our workforce that perhaps does a little bit better? during a recession, you know, is, is that out there? Is there some sort of shining light for some of us, uh, in our population over others? Well, I can just tell you from the lenders perspective, the lenders love to lend to people who have very, what I call boring, stable jobs. And, uh, and, and don't take this as a disparaging comment because boring, stable jobs mean very good paychecks, which continue in good or bad times. But I, I would just say any, any sort of government related position, is one which seems to be, uh, you know, the, the, the fail safe in these types of uh, environments. Um, but yeah, a lot of our clients are, you know, your teachers, your police officers, those types of things. Yeah, yeah. And and definitely from the from the healthcare perspective as well. And I have a theory, I've never tested it. So I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, I have this sneaky suspicion that during recessionary type times, that people will use their benefits more than not. Mm. And I and I and yeah, I, just, is- I just kind of I'm thinking out loud in a sense, Dion. I think that happens because uh they can't spend that, that extra 
hundred dollars at Canadian Tire, but they can go for that massage that's already covered. Oh, I got that massage. I should go for that. Right. And I don't know. I'm that's just thinking point. out loud. I've, it just kind of came to me. I, I think that's that too, that all the people at the benefits companies, at the insurance companies will be calling you, Gary, saying, why are you telling people this? To use their benefits. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. So here's here's my thing, my friends. My advice to you, unsolicited, if it will, uh, if it were, uh, use your benefits up. Some of them are pretty good. Look at I know, yeah. My, my wife has been in the healthcare industry for 20, 30, almost 30 years. And, and sure enough, everyone tends to use up their benefits the last few weeks of that calendar cycle. That's, so spread that's it true. out. That's true. Yeah. That's when people, that's when I used to get my glasses when I wore them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, that's fun. That's fun. So what let's, I don't know if we can, but we're certainly going to try because you and I are both at glasses half full and I know there's certain things out there that is holding that back a little bit or draining that glass. And it has, has that for analogy. I, and I know speaking with some, some very sophisticated investors that own, you know, well over a hundred, 200 units in, in itself and, and, they're even taking a step back and, and that's happening in the market. So what what is that shining, I don't want to say shining light, but what where, where's the positivity? Is is there any, can we see some at this moment? I'm sure we can, you and I always can, but for-, well, for I would say, you know, for property owners um, who are lucky enough to already own, um, as much as we're going through these choppy waters right now, um, Look, let's just look at supply and demand, and especially in, in light of today's conversation, construction down, um, immigration increasing. We don't have enough houses to house the people who are already here, and more people are landing literally as we speak into this country. Uh, and so you, you have an asset that will be in increased demand, right, in the, in the years to come. On the flip side of that, though, is the affordability factor, which is okay. As much as you own that property, um, how how many people can actually afford that property? Uh, and you know, I know, I know you wanted me to spin this positively, but let me just see it as it is. Say it as it is, as I see it. The future of real estate, if if I look forward ten or twenty years, may very well be the people who already have property trading that property. Uh, yeah. It's going to be increasingly more difficult to get your foot on the ladder. Um, there will be those immigrants who come in with significant cash and will be able to buy. There'll be uh, existing Canadian residents, Canadian citizens who will get gifted funds from their family. Uh, but um, I would say that waiting, waiting isn't going to help anybody's cause right now, uh, even in the face of, you know, how negative things might be. Um, I always try to take that 10 or 20 year vision and say, okay, as, as painful as what I'm going through now might be, how will this benefit me, my family and my future self 10, 20 years from now? And uh, it's, it's hard to make those decisions with the economic times we have, but if you're lucky enough to be one of those people who can take action, it's probably worth seriously considering. Yeah. Yeah. Fair point. And I think, I think you and I have talked about this in the past, our, our age group, I'm I'm still in the 40s, so I'm gonna I'm gonna consider that at least until November. Uh, we we might be one of that last large demographics that owns properties, and and in, and in our case, we're lucky enough. And I I do cons- not, I wouldn't say lucky, uh, fortunate enough to own multiple properties, and that's based on where we educated ourselves many years ago. Um, you're right; we will be trading pot property as opposed to more new buyers coming into the market. So with that said, there's opportunity there. There's opportunity to create housing. Even you and I, our, our little portfolio compared to like the big condo developers in a sense, right? Yeah. That's going to take, that's going to become upon us uh, to look at that a little bit differently, I feel. And we've talked about that before. My friend, this is, we could go on and on and on about this, but Kanga Mortgage. I love it. I love it. Remind us of the website again. Yeah, kangamortgage.ca. Uh, you can chat with me there. Uh, and yeah, I look forward to people sharing their opinion of it. I'd love to get any feedback from anybody who may be a web developer type person and understands this stuff better than me and says, Dion, you should have done that. You should have done that. I'm okay with that. Give me some feedback. I'm ready for it. <laughs> There you have it. There you have it, my friends. So, of course, that's Dion Beck. Don't forget, I, we don't say this enough, but don't forget to subscribe. And more importantly, uh, if you have a comment, 
Don't just think it. Type it out. Dino and I love circling back, and we we often talk about some of the comments that uh, pop up in the feeds. So we do appreciate that, my friends. Uh, that's Dion Beg. I'm Gary McGowan. We'll see everybody in the next video. Bye for now.